I got a sick opportunity to film this TV documentary. I could choose the destinations and the riders and then just go travel the world. It was once in a lifetime experience for me. I've been filming powder stuff usually in the States. It's just cool to like just widen everything and just see new spots. There's other stuff out there. We're used to riding park and we wanted to build jumps and find fresh good landings. So it really kind of opens up the opportunity to kind of try new tricks and just kind of get nasty, kind of do whatever you want. Drop in! The best days in snowboarding are when you're kind of putting your life on the line. It's a good feeling. You can't be too careful about anything out here. If you mess up, you can mess up bad. Stop! That was the worst experience. I was just so scared. What's up, dudes? Who <laughs> was Danny Cass, myself, and then Torsten Horgmo? Cool thing having those two guys because it's always cool to ride with different people and see their tricks. You know, I was really excited to come on this trip. You know, you want to come to Canada, come catboard, come to this lodge in the middle of nowhere. And I was like, yeah, I'm down to ride with Arrow. Well, I've never done a trip with any other guys. They've uh, for sure been my idols growing up snowboarding. It's cool to actually be snowboarding with them. Ready, first time? Okay, okay. drop in. Here they go. Yeah. <laughs> so fun. When you're riding with people like Arrow and Torstein, it really kind of pushes yourself to kind of try new stuff. <laughs> to get such a good crew together and out in the backcountry just makes for good things. If everything goes all right, we'll definitely bag some shots and we'll all go home with smiles on our faces. Welcome to Backcountry Snowcats. We're gonna be traveling about 40K by sled and by snowcat to the lodge. It's either snowmobile or a two to three hour cat ride. I think it caught everybody off guard, definitely. <laughs> but if we wanna get good snow, you know, it's not gonna be easy. You can't just, you can't just get out of a shuttle van, you know? That's, that's not how we do it here. They kept throwing the word lodge around, so it was like everyone was like pretty excited. Go hang out in the woods and you know, like live pretty plush. And I'd always heard stories about how amazing the lodges were, so I was pretty excited. And then we kind of rolled up. It's just kind of a bunch of containers. It kind of reminds me of, a, of like a military experience. Everyone's kind of got their own little bunker zone. Welcome everybody to uh, the lodge. The lodge looks like two trailers put together. I guess that's what it actually is, but it's it's such a nice place. It definitely has everything we need. We have wireless internet. We have a hot tub outside. There's um, a flip around TV if you want. So we were all set. And lots of heat. Lots of heat. The 
This place is, is pretty much insane. I mean, it's probably the best winter vacation you could ever take. You're in the middle of nowhere. We're already in the back of you. We're on the spot. I like it like this, you know? We, we will get more work done. Be able to snowboard a little bit more, I think. As every day went on, they kind of opened up more stuff to us. Everybody's like really positive and wants to ride, and everybody's just kind of really motivated. That was so fun. Let's, uh, let's do that again. Let's do some more. You got 12 snowmobiles to choose from. The land helicopter right next to your bedroom. You got three different cats, and they'll just push up whatever you want. So what we need to know first is basically what kind of shots we're looking for. Wherever you think the takeoff edge should be. These guys providing us all this help, you know, the sled and the cat to build this was pretty amazing. You know, we got stuff done way easier. We definitely just saved like three hours of work. We got ourselves a, a booter in the backcountry. It's pretty sweet, man. This place has it going on. I could move here. The first jump we built, like, we thought it might be too poppy or it might not have enough pop. See how it goes. Hopefully, I'll find the tranny. In the end, it, everything worked out well. And that was actually a good session. I got a first track, one of the best feelings in the world. Just ride away clean with one track behind you. That was cool. <laughs> I found it. It's uh, it's a good feeling. I had hard times with the speed for the first couple tries. It just kept overshooting the landing because the landing was really steep. You gotta do that again. I'll try. As soon as you get the speed figure out, it was a really nice jump. Come on, Arrow. Oh. Yeah! <laughs> It's a rock, it's not a tree, dude. You uncovered a big one. Oh, well, maybe it was that for the sound. Rock scrape. We're already down here whenever Danny's ready to drop. Five seconds. Five seconds. Woo! First ever Backside 7 Selfish. Ever. Everybody got a couple of tricks on it, and, and Torsten got a first track, which was really cool. He had the perfect speed. You got to give me five more. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm just making sure. How much is it? 200. Oh, when you're just kind of getting that cabin fever, and you're just going to be stuck, so it was just all of more about like playing cards or playing stupid board games. <laughs> <laughs> Putting houses on it, it was landed on you. Bad state of economy right now, you can't think that you way. You gotta be no. careful. It was super fun, you know? Oh, yeah. that's mine. <laughs> Felt like some like old school camping trips with people, you know? <laughs> Lodge life is super entertaining, man. Just doing some lasagna, just oh. finishing up over here, you smell that? Special recipe. Good dinners, a little bit of festivities. started playing Uno with the Finnish rules. 
if you lost either had to sit under the table and eat. I suck at Uno in life. You know what? Oh, I've been wearing the same socks for like three days. <laughs> and Torsten had a chocolate mustache. I think Arrow was wearing helmet and mittens. One, two, three, shoot! No! Chris lost the worst game. Oh, that game sucked. I mean, he had to eat dessert in the bathroom. It was so funny. It's gonna be gnarly. That room's been dumped in for like the last six days. It was pretty gross. Yeah, he was pretty unlucky with the dessert he had to eat. Oh, well, give him a cookie to go with it. Oh, I made those cookies. And someone had just blown up the toilet right before he went in there, and it just smelled like last night's curry. Don't call in the second. Oh, my God, dude. It was gross. It's being a good team manager. Get in there. Let's, let's get, let's get in. We all... It was kind of childish and stupid. It was so funny at the time. Dinner was pretty interesting that night. Ew. <laughs> That was probably the smallest tranny finder or the biggest drop I've ever done. And I found it. <laughs> Great, dude. That was fun. Good catch. <laughs> Never really done anything like that. <laughs> you must shut this zone down. Riding with these guys is no joke. <laughs> that, was, that was a fun session, dude. Oh, First time in the heli. Today, dude, I'm excited. But definitely kind of nervous. Should be good, though. The leading edge is just sharp like a razor. If you hit it, you're gonna really hurt yourself. Keep everything down below your shoulders. Never lift anything up in the air. You're safer close to the helicopter than you are farther away. Don't go back past the doors. The exhaust is not very good for your health. And uh, the tail rotor's on that side. Do your seat belts up. Keep them done up. Any questions? Can everybody hear me? Loud and clear. Yeah, I'm good. Get this bird in the air. It was like really cool taking off, You're just in the heli, like, whoa, dude, this, this is nice. And we have liftoff. <laughs> Makes like crazy turns too, you know, which is the cool part. You're just like, whoa. Oh, we'll just climb up over here. Check out more door over there. Everything looks so different from the air. Like something that looks really steep from the air could be really flat. You know, it looks like some big uh, windlip rollers. You see that, Danny? Ten four. There's really nothing cooler than flying around in a helicopter snowboard. You have to like do nothing. They just drop you off wherever you want to get dropped off. That was the first time, you know. So I was just kind of like sitting there and being all quiet, like, oh, okay, okay, okay. You know, I didn't have any clue what to do. <laughs> I believe they call this run the uh, the butt plug, and everything kind of goes into one zone. Down there, right? Yeah. You're kind of so used to snowmobiling and and just kind of hiking around and building kickers that it gets hard to start seeing things a little more natural. We've hit some new terrain and have some fun in the path. It's really cool to like kind of come out and start opening up and getting used to it, you know? I 
And then we get dropped off on like probably the most extreme run I've ever taken. We were both kind of scared up there. I mean, not really uh, what we're used to. Okay. Drop. Okay, Danny, drop. No one's ridden down it yet in, in the group or ever. You don't really know. And it's just kind of one of those things you got to go for. You're like, all right. Just full on like shoots, just filled with snow, golden light, and probably just had just the sickest run ever. And then arrow drops in. And I'm just gonna stay in this shoot all the time, you know? For sure. Yeah. Never hit anything natural. Arrow's looking for the kicker. Arrow's line was a little more extreme. It was kind of borderline dangerous. So there was a, like a cliff that I didn't know about, you know? So I was just riding to that cliff. I'm like, okay. Arrow just headed right into probably the worst spot he could have. I was just kind of shocked, you know, because I wasn't expecting it. It was just like a couple seconds time to think what to do and you can't stop. You're just like, all right, here we go, you know? And then you just <laughs> That was my first line I ever tried to do. That wasn't really the mellowest line to start with. You got to start somewhere. You've all been snowboarding so long, so it's really good to, to do something new and switched up a little bit and it just keeps it really fresh. You're so focused or comfortable in the park or in the pipe or on rails and just kind of like expanding your comfort zone a little bit. So fun. That was epic. Yeah. You gotta do more of that kind of stuff. I just don't own a helicopter. When it comes to hiking up huge things, I, I'm kind of into chairlifts. A sick roller, big, cool, steep landing. Tranny's amazing. Jump looks so much fun. A lot of air time. Depending on what arrow wants to do, I know you talked about switch triple backflip, which this is the perfect setup for it if he wants to go for it. Since I've been wanting to do that switch triple backflip, I was like, this could be a good place to try it. Should work, you know, it makes sense, you know, but you never know. I wouldn't say it's even a cool trick. It's sort of a wacky trick to do but it's been two years since I tried it. Oh, not fast enough. I don't know how fast we're gonna be going, probably like 60 or 70K in that jump. Gotta go twice as fast. That looks about it. If I end up doing it once, I'm probably never gonna do it again, you know. I'll give it a try and see how this goes. Kind of nervous, a little bit. Okay, let's go. Oh my God! <sighs> I guess I just started flipping a little bit too slow. I almost got it around. Because I was kind of feeling warm, you know, so I was like, yeah, I keep on going. And usually I don't, like, just give up. He really doesn't get serious until he falls. And then all of a sudden, it's like, he, he kind of gets serious until he lands. I might give it another try. Just got to get that flip going fast. Definitely closer than the first one. It's always hard to land in the powder anyways, you know, like even you get it around perfect, it's like a 50-50 chance if you're gonna land here or not, you know? If I just had like half a second more air time on that last one, 
probably could have had it, actually. Nope. <laughs> it's a big jump. After those three tries, I was kind of over it. I was like, ah, oh, just couldn't get it around. You go so high before you start dropping. You like double the air time here. So much fun. Pretty much the funnest jump I've ever hit in the back of the tree. You're just like free. Everything's just like dead silent, dude. So sick. I'm pretty much done with it now. I try to drift even more right, which means you gotta go even bigger. But there's no landing over there really, which I found out the hard way. So high in the air, I'm like almost straight to flat, right before this short tranny, which I thought I was gonna find. Didn't find it. Just got into this new zone our guides showed us. I think the jump itself looks amazing. I'm just kind of worried about all the compression when it dips down just before the jump in the in run. That's kind of like the zone where you might just get kind of out of control because of the, all the compression. You got to go pretty fast on it. I wasn't expecting that to happen. I was just like so much compression, I couldn't really hold it. And I guess I drifted a little bit too much and went straight in the tree. Oh! That was the worst experience. I was just so scared. I was kind of in shock for a little bit. It hurts right here, my knee's here. I didn't know it was kind of painful. I didn't know what was up with my knee. My knee's pretty swollen actually. Damn. It's still so early, it's really hard to say what's happening because kind of everything's hurting, you know? It would have probably hurt more if I broke something, right? I got the biggest, gnarliest bruise I ever had on my thigh. Learn from mistakes. It's hard to say what was gnarlier, tumbling over those rocks on that line or hitting that tree on my backside seven. But I definitely got more broke off hitting that tree. The tree definitely looks worse than you do. I think the tree's <laughs> hurting pretty bad. I don't think the tree can snowboard today. After all the scary stuff I ended up doing and kind of getting broke off looking back, it was a good experience. And that's what I was kind of expecting this trip to be. to just ride from top to bottom, taking the terrain for what it is. Just find a longer run and just surf it. The natural terrain is really what snowboarding is all about for me. Time for spring, time for park, time to get some good tricks. It's crazy they built it like this. It's like this, you know? It should be like this. We have like one or two more weeks, time to get anything done, you know. Get this park shit going.